T20 Torx to take this off right here, uh, which is the uh, brake sensor holder, or actually, uh, the yeah, the brake sensor holder. Uh, if you can't get it off by hand, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver to pry it open. Try to wiggle it out. You are going to have to reuse these. These are very vital for your... Um, reinstall of everything. Make sure you unplug everything off of the actual strut tower because you're just going to get to get these out of the way. Just like that. Um, you have to remove the sway bar end link right here, which is a 16 millimeter, and then the uh, the if you already did it, you should have broken loose the axle nuts already, because you're gonna need to break those loose before everything anything else can come completely off. Because you have to remove the spindle and the caliper off. Uh, completely this will make life a lot easier for you guys um, the reason why I'm doing all of this because I'm actually replacing the pads and the rotors on this car so that will make my life a lot easier you guys don't have to you guys can actually just remove the ball joint down below and the strut tower and all the hardware that's on here you can remove all that um, and um, the axle the reason why you gotta take off the axle this will allow you to drop the uh, spindle further down to get the strut out of the tower here. Um, that way you don't pull this, uh, the axle out of its socket too. Um, if not, you can damage that and then you're off to go get a new axle. So remember that, okay guys? There we go. And then over here on this side, you just hear my fingers at there's like a five millimeter Allen bit right here. There you go, right there. Remember that because you're gonna need that to remove that uh, ABS sensor. So right now we're removing the sway bar end link. As long as both sides of the car are off the ground, this won't be under any tension. If you do have uh, both sides one side up and the other side not this will actually kind of like be really really difficult to take off so you'll see here that comes right off I have a lot of weight on here because I have a caliper attached to it so remember that uh, we're not going to be reusing the sway bar because the sway bar on these cars get in the way when you um, when you put this thing on bags it'll actually stop it from going all the way down to the uh, frame uh, later we're actually going to frame notch the car as well but that will be for a future episode. But for right now, we're just doing the bag install. Make sure you guys save all your hardware and put it aside. So with your ratchet set to loosen, you're going to hold this side of the strut tower bolt and this side with the wrench and try to get it off be careful and just take your time eventually it will get some off it's not that hard together so that being done now we're gonna get on the caliper itself there's two 18 millimeter bolts you can see that right there one and two 
those two have to come off. Um, again, if you're not doing a brake service, you don't need to do this, but I am. So I need to do this. So this is a part of my full DIY combo setup. But you guys don't have to do this. Skip forward and we'll show you what to do next in just a minute. So removing the brake caliper is pretty straightforward. Um, always recommending that you use a breaker bar or a bigger um, ratchet because these go on pretty hard. So you might have a hell of a time trying to remove it. Before you remove the bottom bolt, make sure you have some zip ties because you're going to need them. Um, so you can zip tie the caliper to the sway bar. That's what I'm going to end up doing. Whoa. So you don't drop it like I just did. Um, the good thing though, I'm replacing the brake lines as well. Um, we'll show you guys a DIY on how to do that. It's very, very easy and straightforward. Um, we'll show you how to bleed the brakes and make sure you have proper pressure all around. So I put the caliper on top of the uh, rotor here. It sits there nicely. Uh, we're going to get our zip tie and we're going to zip tie it right here to the uh, sway bar. So now grab your zip tie, hoop it into the top uh, caliper bolt hole and try to fandangle the zip tie with one hand. It's tricky, but you guys can get it. This job is very, very doable by yourself. I just highly recommend if you do things on your own, double check all your work, even if you do it with a friend. Uh, have your friend double check your work and you double check his work that way no stone gets left you know unturned that way all the work you guys did will be legit and you won't have to double like second guess oh did he do it did he not do it this way you know everything's done right so now with the caliper hanging on the sway bar down below, you're going to need to get a 19 and a 13. The 13 is for the ball joint, the 19 is for the tie rod. Um, I'm going to already remove the tie rod. This allows you to swivel and everything get going. It makes life a lot easier when you're trying to remove the uh, upper strut. A lot of these things are not needed, but I recommend doing them. You, you, you wouldn't believe how much headache you save yourself by doing these little simple um, bolt removals. Um, it just, I don't know, it just, I think it makes, saves a lot of work. It gives you a little bit of extra work, but it saves a lot. Man, these are on here good. I've seen where people um, install these ball joints and they put the ball, like the ball joint part on top and then they, they run all the bolts through the bottom and then they wonder why they have like really crazy shakes or, or really bad um, camber. It's because there's an actual mounting hole for all these. It slides into the middle of the, of the control arm. I'll show you how that looks. Um, but I see many cases where people bring me, you know, a caliper and they're like, oh man, my stuff is all like, I just did some service and all this is messed up. Well, it's because they don't figure out that the ball joint slides in right here. You see this little gap? See if I have something to point with. There you go. This little gap here, that's where it slides into. And then you run your bolt right through it. Now... There is um, a camber plate you can purchase that goes inside here, bolts up, and then the ball joint bolts in between. 
and gives you some camber uh, options. Now those are say they're not very safe to do when you do the camber plates. Your better option is to save up some money and get the uh, tubular uh, R32 or Audi TT uh, control arms and upgrade the spindles to the Audi TT or R32. Those give you actual camber. Now if you can't afford that but you do buy this bag set up, the bags actually themselves actually have a camber plate on top and they'll give you two degrees of camber. Now the benefit for that is that you can actually with two degrees of camber you can actually uh, camber the front and go even lower uh, depending on how you want the car to sit. So it is a good option, something you guys can think about um, depending on how you're doing your bags. So now is a good time to remove the axle bolt. Uh, once you already broke it loose before you took the car off the ground, so that makes it a lot easier. Just take it all the way off now. I'm going to actually be replacing these axles, so I am not worried about putting these back on. But for you guys who are resurfacing them, um, you're going to put them back on uh, with the breaker bar. Make sure you got a torque wrench and torque these down to about 100 to 150 foot pounds. Um, look up your torque specs to be correct, but I think those that's the right correct uh, torque spec. So that pushes out. And now I need a 19 for the tie rod in. And remember, I'm doing a big service, so if you guys are just tuning in or fast forwarding, this is the service I'm doing for the car because I'm doing more than just bags. So it's something you guys, um, depending on what you guys are doing. So if you guys are just doing the bags, uh, we'll explain everything when we get to it. But we're getting ready to pull the. Uh, the strut. Now, one side is identical to the other, um, so I'm not going to show you guys the other side because it's exactly the same. So I'm not super concerned about that. Now, to get this tie rod out without, you know, a, a tie rod puller or press, uh, make sure you put the nut as flush as you can to the bottom of the bolt so you don't damage it and then you're going to grab a hammer and then wail on it like that until it's until it pops out now make sure you try to keep it as straight as possible don't try to damage the sides of the nut hit it straight on and it will just pop right out once you got it in uh, um, hit it in a couple times now if you are worried about it you can get a piece of wood put it underneath it and then just whack as hard as you can uh, underneath it, it'll pop right out. That's another way of doing it. I do it this way all the time. Um, I'm not really worried about damaging it. Um, but if you do it, keep it the way I tell you to do it, and make sure you hit straight on and not on the side, so you don't round or warp the, the nut itself. You'll have no problem taking it off and putting it back on. Like I was saying earlier, if you hit it dead on, you'll be okay. It's not gonna damage it, and it won't warp it, so you'll be good and you can reuse this nut. Popped it right off. You can see? Tie rod ends off. You're good. Make sure you put the bolt back on. I mean the nut back on. So you don't lose it or misplace it. Now the axle's off and the ball joint's off. Um, I'm actually going to use my impact driver to... Oh, screw's not even on that tight. Uh, usually these set screws are on like super tight or they're super rusty and they're super hard to take off. So use one of these impact drivers, put it in, you hit it with a hammer and it'll break loose the screw for you that's rusted in place. Super, super useful tool. I can't kid you not how many times I use this to remove rotors. It's a huge lifesaver. Uh, the reason why I have lug nuts on here, I use that so I can break loose the um, axle bolt or to turn them. Because if you don't, and if you don't have the set screw, it'll actually just spin the uh, rotor and you're not going to be doing anything. So now, all that's removed. So all you see now is just the, just this guy right here, the uh, uh, spindle, ball joints removed. And the tie rod's off, so this will just pop right off. Move the axle as far as out of the way you can. And then the next thing to do is turn the uh, spindle over 
just like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's see if I can fix you guys up here a little bit higher. Okay, now you'll see right here on this spot there's a um, there's that little bar. You need to bend this out. This will allow you to pull this out, just like that, and get it out of the way. You don't need it because you're replacing it, so who cares if you bend it? Okay, now that's going to spread this, uh, give you space now to put a chisel in here. So find a chisel that's thick enough that'll fit in there nicely. And I got the right one right here. And then what you're going to do, it's going to get a little loud, get your hammer, and just spread that open. Sorry about the noise, guys. Uh, once you do that, you see that? Spindle just dropped. You can buy a spreader tool. Uh, these sell them online. They're like 20, 30 bucks. And they go in and you turn them with the ratchet and it pops right out. Pretty easy. So now that we uh, did that, the last but not least part is to remove the upper strut bolts. Right up here. Let me get you guys over here so you guys can see this. Get my camera all set up for you guys. Sorry if you guys don't like how this looks, but I want to see so you guys can see everything I'm doing. Well, that sucks. I can't get it to stay. So now with the, uh, I didn't have my socket, so I had to use a, a vice grip and a 21 millimeter uh, socket, and then my long uh, Allen bits, and I was able to break it loose, just like that, and pretty much just break it loose until it falls down to the ground, who cares if it falls, you're not going to be reusing anything that, on that, we just need to take this out of here. Just like that, it just drops, and you're good. Whoo! That almost hurt me. <laughs> Let that sit there, because I had to torch it. I torched the inside of it to break it loose. Just for about like 30 seconds, and that was it. Came out, and you got your... Uh, right here, you got your strut out. So that's done. Now we got to figure out how to... Um, make the holes for the new so I went on airlifts website to get the uh, advice that we need to um, properly center the camber plates as you can see here I already got them installed here we gotta copy the same thing on that side so on airlifts website they have a manual on how to actually install these uh, bags even though they're not uh, airlift bags they're almost exactly the same as uh, airlifts uh, extreme uh, bag setup so they give you a little template that you print out um, I will post on the link down below on our on the video down below a link to the down PDF file I'll put it on my Google Drive bo um, box so you guys can download it. So in the instructions it says you need to center this uh, hole. This hole is two and a half inches, two, two, two inches and a quarter. So to center that you need to go an inch and a quarter, actually no, an inch and an eighth over and that's the middle because uh, that combined is two and a quarter. So that's what we ended up doing here to center this side. And then I, I, had, I didn't have string, so I used a soldering wire um, or core to center this over here. 
same thing over here and I centered it with the the plate that they give you now the plate does have a centering hole this is the front of the actual plate and then these are the back bolts um, after I installed the first one over there I had to do a lot of drilling even though this plate uh, template is supposed to be very accurate it's pretty close but it's off by a millimeter or so uh, since the raceline bags aren't probably not machined as accurately as the airlift ones um, so I had to drill my holes out a little bit larger and they finally fit perfectly after that um, download the, the guide for getting your template and actually how to center your your uh, template here or your bag once you get that done you're gonna punch I just grabbed a screwdriver and I punched it over here I'm gonna remove my wire since I don't need it anymore same with this and I made little holes here where is my my um, drills actually gonna be uh, going into now those are the three holes that you need to make uh, the whole size um, by airlifts and um, online research is 11 and 30 seconds so that's the actual hole size for these bolts right here once you make the holes uh, the way that you know you got this correct and on point is underneath at the bottom you'll see here see this circle here where my finger goes around that plate will fit perfect underneath that if it doesn't fit perfect you messed up and you didn't center it correctly or you didn't um, you didn't get the holes down correctly and that's where I kind of messed up so I ended up making the holes a little bit more oblong and then actually finally centered and got it in on that side uh, it takes a lot of finessing so take your time don't rush it so I ended up using um, four different size um, bits here um, one to start off second to make it larger third and then finally going to 11 and 30 seconds that's how I ended up stepping up all the way to the larger hole that way you don't break your bits as fast and you don't make the holes all funky so drill your holes and I'll show you what to do next okay so what you guys are watching right now is pretty much the uh, the final part of installing your uh, bags so this is just the installation of the bags. We haven't even started yet on the running the lines, your air tank, and all that. That's going to be another DIY. So I can make this kind of a two-parter because uh, that part becomes very, very particular because that's going to come down to an air tank setup, your trunk setup, the way you want to dress it up, and all that. So I'm not going to go that far yet, but we're going to get you with bags installed with Raceland. And then from there, we're going to do a DIY for doing the rest of the stuff, okay? So, don't ask any other questions until we get this part done. And then, on my second DIY, which will be coming up next, after this DIY is done, um, you'll see that. So, you guys see this right here? When you guys got your bags, the plate that was on top of here um, was lined up here. So, we got to line it up to the middle. Um so on the top there's a zero and you line it up to the middle of this right here that's how you know you have zero degrees of camber and to be honest with you we don't even know if that's even accurate but we're gonna use that as a pretty much as a zero point then when we go down to our alignment shop then we'll actually adjust camber accordingly and then we'll make that our zero mark but for the moment that's gonna be our zero mark um, follow the plate that's on top and then we'll go from there um, you're going to need a long 5 millimeter um, Allen bit because a short one won't fit. Um, you won't be able to fit your fingers in there to tighten, tighten it underneath. It's a really tight fit, so it's going to be hard to show you, but I'll do my best. Um, I think it will be better if I show you on the other side. Let's see if you guys can see that. There you go. So, as you can see, right here there's a camera plate and if you look down here where my finger is down here there's two uh, holes here where the bolts are gonna slide into same way that you got them inside the box but you're gonna need to line them up there's a zero point right in the middle you can't see that because it's dark um, it's already around 8 o'clock right now at my house 
but that's what you're going to need to do. I'm going to just get this started, but I finished one side already, so I can show you guys the end result of the bag being fully installed. Um, I adjusted the height. I'll show you guys right now. Let me get all my stuff over here ready. Sorry for the crappy camera here, but we're going to do this together. So, with the bag installed, you can see that? And it's zeroed out. I hope you guys can see that. It's zeroed out in the middle with the bolt and everything, the four bolts. Then, what I ended up doing, I kind of gave myself a default uh, height here. So, from here to the bottom of here, I didn't use the, the top, but I did the bottom, and that's four inches. That's kind of what I gave myself as a starting point, and then I'll work my way from there. Um, we're going to have to cut the sway bar out next, because that will be hitting, which is fine. I mean, I don't care for the sway bar, but some people do, some people don't. Um, so we're going to do that next on the DIY, cut the bar out, and get through it. There's two 13 millimeter bolts, and just pull it out. Um, I don't want to even care for these stock sway bars, so I'm not even going to try to resell it, like salvage it. But in there, uh, make sure that your air fitting line or hole is towards the brake line here. That's a very vital uh, point to make because you want the air line to be away from your turning radius and from your tire. So you want it away from it, so as far as back you can, and then because we're, we're going to run this down this way like that and we're gonna bolt it to the wall that way there's no way to affect it but we gotta give it some slack because we are we gotta make sure the wheels do turn all the way left and right so the way we're gonna solve uh, figure that out is while the car's in the air you want to turn the wheel all the way to the right and all the way to the left and make sure it doesn't tug on it and you're good it's pretty easy some guys out there like to zip tie it to this that's a no-no don't zip tie it to that because it will rub and eventually make a hole. Don't do that. You want it to get away from stuff, from anything else other than itself, and maybe a hanger to, to itself, and really nice tight, nice and tight hanger. So that's part. That's done. You're gonna reverse your install process. Nothing very difficult. And then we'll go from there. We'll set up the lines and everything for you guys. So again. Zero out the top, four inches from here to here. Your torque specs, look them up. Use Google, people. Um, I'll also put information on here for you guys, but reverse your install process as well. And that'll be it for your bag install from uh, Pinchao's Garage. Now, this is for Raceline Air Suspension. The next install will be, the next DIY, the part two, will be the airline running, the air tank fitment, false floor, and and wiring and everything so we can make it all pretty and stuff. Thanks again for watching Pinche Hao's Garage. I'm Pinche Hao and it's late night but we did it together and we're ready to do some more work because this is like my friend says this is like the Phoenix. It's the Phoenix. It's rising from the ashes. This is my Mark IV and I'm building this for you guys and for me because I'm a Mark IV lover and obviously you guys are as well because you guys watch my channel for Mark IV stuff. So thanks again for watching, and peace. Love all you guys.